I don't think I ever really believed everything. And I realized that quite a few of the things didn't hold water. The actual religions were man-made from wherever. God? Who's God? What's God? I think skepticism really is the first step. Scientific zest and zeal for the real world. That was it. <laughs> I was an atheist from then on. Finished doing a meditation and he said, no, they're not stupid. Anybody can fall into this trap. Hi, I'm Red. Hi, I'm Susan. And today we're interviewing our friend Frank to see the story of his road to atheism. So, um, you were, where were you born and raised? Uh, West Orange, New Jersey. Aha, uh -huh. okay. And into a religious family or into... Yes, we got double religion. Oh, uh, dear. One parent Protestant and one parent Catholic. Okay, at least they're both Christians. <laughs> yeah. So you were raised uh, in, in a religious family? Was yeah. Was it very strict? Uh, not, not strict, but they took it seriously from the theological point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, not too strict as far as what am I doing and how am I following it with a lot of the rules. Uh, I guess for my parents, they probably felt lucky for some time that I soaked it all up and I was uh, really into it. Um, so, At what age would you say you started to have different feelings about it and questionable uh, thoughts? Well, the, when you're hearing the stories that, that um, are somewhat violent and don't make a lot of sense, I think uh, the seed more or less was in the back of my head that one day uh, I'll have time and I'll actually research this further and I'll see whether, you know, all these facts add up. And you just, you know, you go along with life and so keep what, putting it on roughly, the back burner. Roughly what age would that be? Well, the first time I, I, I heard, uh, like, a, one of the Bible stories that had to do with, like, Abraham mm -hmm. and killing his son, I think that that, that did it. put some serious doubt. But it didn't it didn't make me uh, leave the religion for a while. It was, like, many, many, many years of just kind well, of Well, how old were you doubting. about that time? Oh, I probably I heard mean, that story seven, like, yeah, 13 or something. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you went to Bible classes and uh, yeah, the whole stations thing. of I mean, cross and everything. And you I enjoyed confirmed. it. And it was, it, I, yeah, I did the confirmation in both churches, actually. Yeah. <laughs> really? Is that allowed? Uh, I, I don't think they've got a database where they're double checking. <laughs> I'm asking, are you bipolar because of that? I could be. I do have some issues. <laughs> <laughs> so what what led you really to walk the road to atheism? I think it helped at the Catholic University that uh, more of, um, I guess, the, the kids that I respected for their intelligence and professors, mm -hmm. I think in the philosophy class, didn't believe. And... Uh, there was there was one professor uh, that was talking. It was it was kind of unusual class about mass communications and mass media or something like that, and it was it wasn't exactly philosophy, but he he somehow had brought up uh, people that were brainwashed in cults or something like that, Jesus Jones type thing, mm -hmm. and uh, we were all in the class, you know, jumping up and down, saying, you know, oh, that's because they're stupid, and he was very calm, almost like he had just finished doing a meditation, and he said. No, they're not stupid. Anybody can fall into this trap. And I, I felt like he was looking at me. I was like, wow, maybe, maybe I need to do a little more reevaluation. And um, then when I re learned um, also at the Catholic University that um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are, are not um, living at the same time as Jesus, I was like, wait, I thought that was part of the story. They were like his friends. So yeah. things started to fall apart. Okay. And uh, did you... Was there any, when you started to come out of this closet and walk that road? Uh, did you tell any of your family members? I, I thought I was I wasn't going to tell them, and then when topics came up, it um, slipped out by me almost uh, being a, a little bit rude and calling a family member naive. <clears throat> did you recant, or you stuck, I, stuck your own? I, I, stuck your own. I, well, I, I kind of let, no, I let it go. I felt really bad, and I wish I didn't do it, and I, I encourage other people to not do it. If they got family members that are, like, going to just stick with this stuff, 
um, you use the nicest possible way to let them know your position, but don't don't use words like naive to describe them. So your family members, including relatives, et cetera, et cetera, that are not closely associated, you still <clears throat> kept that under the under the radar. The, the radar, and they wouldn't know about it. I I mentioned it to my uncle, who's who's a missionary, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a year or two ago, mm -hmm. over the phone, and he immediately stated exact words oh I'm sorry I'm a bad uncle <laughs> it was a total non sequitur <laughs> I'm a bad well, uncle eh? he was right as a missionary and wasn't around to brainwash you further into the faith I'm gonna guess that's the have way you ever you have you ever spoke to you <clears throat> any of your neighbors or friends or even fellow workers and let them, let them know about your I, beliefs I've, I've, I've made it clear at work many a times that um, I'm not an advocate of any religion, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't often use the word atheist mm -hmm. at all, <laughs> I guess, never, usually, unless I'm at the atheist Would group it be a or the scientific group. at work? I am scared of the word, actually. Yeah, I'm very programmed. Yeah, okay, it's your program. It's not that you said atheist and they fire you or anything, you know. Oh, I don't know. I didn't think about that. No, it was so social purposes. But I did seek out this group in particular on Meetup. I think I actually typed in the word atheist because it was going through my mind. That, like after agnostic and philosophy, these are the guys that really have made it um, like their, their second point after the definition of what does atheism mean without God. It, it, it almost immediately follows that and, – and – we really don't like religious institutions. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question now. <clears throat> this may seem uh, not <clears throat> reasonable, but it's been important. Did you believe in Santa Claus, and at what age did you stop believing, and why? I can't remember if I believed him, but I probably did. Okay. You come to a conclusion based on what facts? Yeah, that one I don't remember. I, I, did you have a fireplace? <laughs> uh, we did, yeah, we did all the Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. Whether I actually believed that Santa Claus was a real figure, I have no idea. I can't remember that far back. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I said that is because <clears throat> some people will say at the facts, some places don't have fireplaces. So how do you get inside? In other oh, words, oh, using logic. You're saying, oh, oh, you oh. Get my, yeah. oh, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Did you use too. that? Did you use logic to it? Or just yeah. friends told you or you just slowly came to a conclusion? Yeah. Uh, you have, you, have grew, you outgrew it. Okay. You outgrew it. I uh -huh. think most children do. And <laughs> the problem is that adults still cling to this belief in an imaginary being. That's no, I, I think yeah. I think it's it is possible that my parents may have let me in on that I um, quote unquote secret that ah. that Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah. It usually takes a couple of things, either it's that or it's tooth fairy uh, or it's uh, something associated with Easter the, Bunny. Easter Bunny and stuff like that where you sort of grow out of it. The one thing that you don't grow out of is religion. Adults still carry that childhood thought, you know, and fear that's involved with that from their background and training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. um, do you have any pro have has okay, your lack of belief turned up any real, real problems in your life? Oh sure, and and um, marriage. Or well, no, in in just general decisions, I guess. Um, the first one of the fr I, I kind of like to work with my hands. So when I was um, signing up for the army, I they make you choose a skill. I was like, oh, Jesus was a carpenter. I'll sign up for carpentry. That's you know idealistic, and it, there are a lot of good things to working with your hands. But I I have. I think some other abilities that are more rare and, and useful. And so um, it wasn't it wasn't until I actually got hurt in the army and hurt my back <laughs> that I had to stop doing carpentry like mm -hmm. and construction like things. And uh, I never really got heavily into the carpentry, I'm mostly construction laborer here and there just to make uh, some money. But I'm glad I, it. It's sick, but I am kind of glad that I got hurt because who knows? I may have just kept saying, oh, I got to pay rent. Let me just be a construction laborer. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are a lot of important aspects to being construction laborer. So you found your bliss elsewhere. Yeah, I, I found my uh, bliss in playing with spreadsheets. 
Ah, and uh, okay. computers and okay, yes. internet. That's very, very good. And it's not in the Bible because it didn't exist way back in the age <laughs> yeah. of ignorance, you know. So, yeah, you know, it, it's it's free from any ties to religion, basically, you know. They, the Bible is so programmed in me. Every once in a while, when the internet was first coming out, I would say it's like that verse in the Bible that says, and everyone will know. <laughs> Speaking about the internet, have you ever seen any of the debates that were on the internet from the Four Horsemen? Maybe once or twice, but most of uh, the info I'm getting regarding uh, leaving uh, religious stuff behind is going to actual live meetings. Speaking of which, how did you know about New York City Atheists? Yeah, I, I was on a member of Meetup from um, a friend that introduced me to a Meetup about business. And then uh, once I was at, you're actually a member... I clicked in there, you know, search for other meetings. I think I did philosophy, and then I did atheism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any of the science fields, any of the disciplines in science uh, made you think of things in a different perspective, a, a different aspect, a different way of <clears throat> coming to the same type of conclusion? In other words, empirical evidence? Well, um, I mean, you know, the miracles are, are a major problem for science. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that's, that's another factor. But mm -hmm. for a long time, I was okay with miracles. It's like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe God, you know, bends the rules once in a while for a special situation, almost like a party, you know, break out the champagne or mm -hmm. something. Makes, uh, what is it, loaves and uh, fish, what, what's when, at the yeah. wedding, you know, way back yeah, when, what did he, there's Jesus fish and did? bread, yeah. You know, he, he, you know, so, yeah, that, but, um, and on the other hand, a good magician could probably do that too, so. Changes water into wine, et yes. cetera, et cetera, right. Those are the different <clears throat> but, miracles. Um, you know what really caused a problem for me though is I was trying to every once in a while say well maybe 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 he, God will allow miracles for a certain group and um, he'll let a certain group more or less be a prophet and see things that other people can't see and uh, maybe even, even each race has their own maybe um, you know s some people of certain uh, complexion will have the, uh, the Jewish and the Christian and the Muslim. And so maybe God's trying to be fair, almost like a racially diverse type thing. And uh, once I actually started thinking like that, it was so impossible to hold it all together and say, yeah, yeah, this is possible. Uh, I felt like, you know, that that is just silly. And it, it kind of dawned on me that I was I was doing extra theoretical nonsense to try to make one side of maybe my personality happy. Only more people did that, you know, really took a look <laughs> at it, you know, and went, oh, that makes no sense whatsoever. You know, we'd have a better world. Yeah. So do your parents know that you are firmly not religious anymore? Yeah. Not even using the word atheist, but... Yeah. Yeah. And they've accepted it and you're still in the family? Yeah, once in a while they say it's a phase. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. They hope that, you know. And they're probably praying for you, which of course is really helpful. Fortunately, I don't. I don't get that comment too often. Okay, and, yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. That yeah. is one of the most annoying yeah. comments yeah. in the world. Have you ever been in an awkward situation where <clears throat> you're at a dinner or something, and they say, "Let us all pray," and they hold hands and? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a tough one. What do you do under those circumstances? I don't. I don't think I prayed last time, but the the habit has seemed to stop. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe because of in me. The, well, so, in other words, if you continue <clears throat> deep inside you might say well I'm, I'm i guess i'm being a little bit of a hypocrite and then again you may say well i'm just trying to keep the peace yeah go with the floor you may get out there and say you know honestly folks uh, i don't come to those same conclusions but i want to thank those farmers and those people who deliver the food and prepare the food for this no it's somebody what else's meal who, who paid i just let them do whatever <laughs> they want i don't care that's fine that's um, being polite well, yeah, it's their it's it's their party, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's funny you say that though because we did used to do the hand holding and the prayer almost seance like, and um, and I don't I don't think it's come up 
in a while. So that's that's fortunate for me. Uh, maybe they know I would just get up. Yeah, and, and they don't want to push back. that. They don't want you to really, you know, close, slam the door in their faces. Yeah. You are a participant with us <clears throat> when we have the Saturday uh, tabling when it's that time of the year for that. Yeah. How do you feel about doing that? What I think it's great. I really enjoy it. It's uh, fantastic to, to get out there and try to help other people realize that it's um, okay to walk away <coughs> from your religion. Uh, that for me, it, it is... Therapeutic awful. almost, right? Well, it's, yeah, and it's almost scary for me to quote unquote be caught by my old church members they're really nice people they help me do bible study by? no no but not that I've, i can remember <laughs> but if if it were to happen or maybe they were to see this film they they i i'm sure they would feel really bad and i wouldn't want them to take it as me being ungrateful they've done a lot of things for me for instance in bible study you you would like you were mentioning um detective stories you almost go through the Bible story and act like you're doing some detective work or analysis or what is the true meaning that God's trying to get out of this. And that that was actually helpful for me personally on a learn how to read and try to analyze things level. Most of the time outside of church when I was at home hanging out with my friends that live in the neighborhood, we were riding skateboards and bicycles and having a lot of fun with that. But I think um, outside of school, that was the only time where I had a group that said, let's sit down, read this. Yeah, I bet they regret causing you to use your brains. <laughs> yeah, they're going, oh, no, oh, no, look what we did. You know, we thrust him on the road atheism. There's a saying that uh, goes like this. Um, I'll stay. I'll stay out. What is it? Uh, stay out of our schools, and I'll. And I won't think in your church or something like that. Yeah. Oh, I've heard that somewhere. Yeah, yeah that would be a good one to. Yeah, you, you don't really think yeah, very much. Don't, don't pray. It's, don't pray in our schools, and yeah. I won't. I won't think in your church. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, very few like people it. actually that's, do. That's right? the way I say it. Yes. <laughs> I think I have a shirt design like that. Well, uh, any questions? Anything you want to ask? Anna? Did you ever meet anybody and you told them that you were an atheist, and they said, "I am too." Hmm. I don't. I don't think so. But I have. I have um, made it clear that I don't like religious institutions to people that that I wasn't sure of where they stood on the topic, and uh, occasionally. Um, if they were dogmatic towards you and said that this is it and you should think this way or you're going you downstairs to... after you die no no, no no well yeah i've gotten those but occasionally i've gotten the good reactions where the the other person uh also said yeah I'm, I'm, i don't uh think that religious institutions are helpful to society either when you're done street tabling has there people who come up to you and say you know, why are you an atheist or uh... there there was one that was great he was really into trying to debate from a civil point of view, very, very uh, rational, um, but yet he was still into the uh, the Bible, and you know he was trying to throw out what he thought were were intelligent arguments, and he even had his family there. They didn't. They they showed up a little bit later to the scene. I think they were maybe looking for him. Maybe he was supposed to be in the mall or something, and he said, "I'll meet you in front," and he just stayed uh, with us too long, but. Um, yeah, I felt really good about talking to him. Uh, we didn't trade emails. I, at least I didn't get his, but I gave him mine. I said, hey, if you ever want to talk more, because I, I saw him exactly, even though I had never met him before, as the type of person that I may have had um, Bible study with um, 20 or 30 years ago <coughs> previously. And I, I almost look at, at it like a journey. You know, if I can, if I can help somebody... You know, on the road. Yeah, mm -hmm. and exactly. with respect because of the possible past uh, acquaintance. Yeah, but he was cool because the way the way I saw him try to throw <clears throat> something out, like, and what do you say to this? I could, I could, I could almost see the little slight bit of timidness in him, like, like he didn't know what was going to happen in, in this argument. I think a lot of people deep down inside, they know that this is nonsense somewhere in their, I don't know, 
part of their um, Freudian psyche or yes, something. Yes, and we're trying to liberate that. them. Yeah, yeah there That's you go. That's what we're doing, yes. All right. <laughs> Liberators. If you, if you told somebody who's some knew you were an atheist, did they ever come up and ask you to start asking questions about atheism? Well... I don't think so. No, I, I've never, I've never really um, held out the flag for that long. I, the couple times that I had the, the hat on in public, I didn't feel too comfortable with it because, aside from atheism by definition, uh, I'm not comfortable with um, everything that that's in the uh, association with the term as far as politics and um, business uh, philosophy is concerned. Can you give me an example? Okay, so um, I feel like there's there's a lot of compassion at the atheist groups um, for poor people. And I think that's very healthy for, you know, having, having uh, I guess... In the biblical terms, love for your fellow brother, things like that. But I think um, a lot of the programs that we have right now that actually distribute cash and put hand, cash in the hands of poor people actually hurt hurt them in the long run. I'd like to help poor people by providing the actual good or service that they need just to survive. But I um, I don't I don't feel like I would get a positive response from the atheist community on that one. I think you would, oh, you but would. the thing is that, you know, <clears throat> the, um, the other side, the Republicans, they really like to have all charities be church-oriented. Yeah, so a lot of times and they see whereas, that too. whereas the Democrats yes. would prefer that, you know, that the government would provide services, but we're being hobbled by the other side so we can't provide the services that we would do and we're actually outraged you know they're there they're not providing the services to veterans and they're not providing services to poor people and they're taking away food stamps and they're doing horrendous things yeah. that we need to firmly separate church from state let me add one thing here and, and make it clear atheists are not monolithic Okay, we have as diverse viewpoints as any other group. And we have, uh, there are good people and there yes. are, are people that are indifferent and there are people that are not so good. Yeah. But we, uh, the thing about atheists you'll find are we're good thinkers. We think things through logically for the most time, most cases, at least when it comes to religion. And we do things such as we have blood drives, we have, uh, we will donate and we will be involved in taking care of those people who are poor. And it doesn't. There's no law saying that no atheist cannot be involved in doing this. If I if I see that law say, <clears throat> saying that, then that would be against the Constitution as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So keeping that in mind, and for our viewers to keep that in mind as well, we are open and are as grateful and as would be able to help anybody and everybody as we possibly can. We're like everybody else. We're not the <laughs> devil or any other false accusation of thought. Okay. I want to thank you very much for okay. coming here. And uh, do you have any last thing that you would like to say to? No, thank you very much. Okay. Well, we thank you. Okay. Power to you. Thank you for watching New York City Atheist, My Road to Atheism TV show. Tune in the same time next week for another chapter of My Road to Atheism. If you have any other comments or questions, go to www.NewYorkCity-Atheist Organization or NewYorkCityAtheist at gmail.com. Or if you'd like, you can reach us by phone, dial 212-330-6794. For those of you who want more information or advice, there are programs to help you. One, New York City Atheists has a monthly meetup event called Living with Atheism. Two, you can attend various New York City Atheist meetups where you will be able to discuss with our members any questions or issues you may have. Three, if you're a member of the clergy and you are having doubts about your beliefs, there is a group called The Clergy Project. Remember, this is not a dress rehearsal. Live your life now. And when it's over, it's all over. Have dessert first. <laughs>